Ya Allah, give us the unexpected, undeserved gift. What gift? Min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. From our wives and our husbands and our children, give us what makes our eyes so happy that it makes us cry. Qurrata a'yun. It cools our eyes. You know what that means? It makes you so happy you want to cry. When you listen to your child recite Qur'an, and they love reciting Qur'an, then it makes you so happy you want to cry. When you look at your wife and what, how she's raising your children, it makes you so happy you want to cry. When she looks at the husband who wakes up her, her children for fudge, his children for Fajr and takes them to the masjid, she wants to cry. She's so happy. Our husbands cry and our wives cry, but they don't cry because they're happy. <laughs> they cry for other reasons. You know, we are asking Allah for tears of joy. We want to be so happy with our family. How are we going to do that? Right now, every day you go home, you fight with your wife, man. Every day you go home. She's like, why were you so late? Why are you asking me? You always ask me. Don't you know there's traffic? Look outside the window. And you start every day, every day. And then you're so angry, then you look at the child and he's like, what are you, why are you playing with a toy? Why do you look happy? We don't have happiness here. Where's your homework? And the kid's like, I, I didn't get any homework. You know? Why not? I'm going to complain to your school. You know, God, this is not qurrata a'yun. There are people who come to the masjid for salat, and salat is supposed to make you, give you peace. It's supposed to make you calm. It's supposed to settle you down. And then they go home and there's a tornado that walked into the house. Oh, children, or children hide under the bed. You know, the wife gets off the phone. She's like, you know, you cannot be the reason for your family to be afraid of you. You should be a reason for your family to be joyed, overjoyed. Your children should love, or they should run to you and hug you when you come home. That's the relationship you should have with your children. And while I'm on this topic, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, parenting was different. Now it's not the same. You cannot afford to be, I'm talking to the fathers here, you cannot afford to be authorities over your children. You cannot afford that. You have to be friends and authorities with your children. Our fathers were not friends with us. They were authorities. We didn't like slap our dad on the back and say, Hey dad, let's go play some basketball. Let's play some football. We didn't do that. Abba Kimon, Baba. Abba Jan, you sit straight. Assalamu alaikum. You get their shoes. That was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Your kids don't do that. And they won't. You, we're living in 2013, brothers and sisters. We have to accept reality. Our children are exposed to a lot of things. It doesn't matter if you're in the Muslim world or anywhere else. Ihtiram will remain. You have to respect your parents. But our children, we have to. The only one who will give them the love of Islam is you. And you will not be able to give it to them if you're only an authority. If you only yell at them and tell them what to do. But you're not their friend. Every father here should know and master the video games your children play. You should be better at, if you're letting your kids play video games, first of all, that's a problem. But if you are letting them play and you're not going to let them stop, then you better play with them. Then you better be sitting there playing with them. You don't go watch the news. You're not going to change the world. Okay? <laughs> You've watched enough news, believe me, and nothing has changed. You need to know, what the, what, you know whether the stock market went up or down. You don't even care about stocks, man. You, why are you watching the news? It has nothing to do with you. Listen to it in the car. When you're in the car. Don't come home and watch TV. Don't come home and watch the news. Come home and play with your kids. Do homework with your kids. Talk to your kids. Take your kids to the masjid. Do that with them. Make your kids love you. I tell you, I'm, I'm telling you, if we don't, if the fathers, if the fathers don't do this, we will lose this ummah. We will lose our next generation. I am telling you. I'm guaranteeing you. This is the real problem. The, the, I cannot come from America. Sheikh Mufti Ming, can, Mufti Ming cannot come from, you know, uh, all of different places in the world. And they come and they sit here and they give you a dars. We can only help a little bit. We can only help a little bit. The real change that will come in your child's life will come from you. Will come from you. رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ And now let me talk to the sisters for a little bit. Sisters, you're stuck with your husband. Stop being angry. 
accept it and try to love your husband. Try to make your husband happy. Because believe me, if he gets even a little bit happy, you will be really happy. I'm telling you, right now you say, I'm angry, why should he be happy? I know you, I know. I've talked to enough of you, I know. He, he doesn't care about me, why should I care about him? And he thinks the same thing. She doesn't care about me, why should I care about her? You start. You be nice to him. You smile at him and he'll get, he'll get all shocked. Like, why are you smiling? <laughs> Who? What, what? Is everything okay? <laughs> you know? Is your, is your mother here? Is that like, you know? <laughs> you know? Uh-uh. You have to be nice to your husband. You have to... Don't dress up when you go to a wedding. Dress up for your husband. Even if you have four kids, it doesn't matter. Dress up for your husband. There's enough shaitan and fitna outside. So your husband should find beauty in you, not anywhere else. You, sh you should, and you should be, you should compliment your wife. You should say nice things to your wife. You shouldn't just always complain. Where are the keys? Where's the mail? Did you get the, did you get the groceries? Did you do this? Did you, oh, you didn't do anything. Oh, you don't listen to me. Stop, man. There's not enough salt. There's too much salt. There's not enough sugar. There's too much sugar. There's not hot enough. It's too hot. Stop. Stop. Say nice things to your wife. And I know if you're like Indian Pakistani, then it's very difficult for you. <laughs> I know. It's very hard to say nice things to your wife. In, in our culture, if you say nice things to your wife, your ribs hurt. Like, ah, 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 ah. You know, so you have to immediately follow it up with something mean. You have to say something bad right after to balance the equation. You can't just say nice things. So if the food is really good, you're like, oh, but I still hate your mother. It's like something. You have to... <laughs> You have to add something, <laughs> you know. But don't try to be, this is the dua. We are asking Allah to give us so much happiness from our wife and our husband and our children that it makes us want to cry out of joy. How will that happen? You cannot ask Allah for something and not make any effort yourself. It doesn't work that way. You cannot say, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. Ya Allah, make me establisher of the prayer. And you're sitting, lying down in bed, adhan's going on, you're like, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. <laughs> it's not, Allah is not going to send you angels that carry you and lift you to the salat and then they make you make ruku and get you back. <laughs> you got to get up yourself, man. You make dua and you make some effort yourself. You're not going to make dua and all of a sudden your wife will start loving you. No, you have to show her love too. You have to do that. You have to make some effort in the house. I am telling you, this is the work of the ummah today. Fixing the family.